Look at that, a blurry background with a pocket camera. That's amazing. All right, the most practical camera of all. I'm shooting with it right now. I use this camera more than any other camera that I have, and I have hundreds of cameras, as I'm sure you know. This is a camera that I use when I just wanna grab something. I don't wanna think about f-stops or shutter speeds or ISOs. I just wanna turn it on, and I know it's gonna focus. I know it's gonna be correctly exposed, and it's gonna look great, and I don't wanna think about it. There's so many situations where I'm just too much thinking about other things, and I don't wanna think about camera settings. And not only that, it's small. For me, a definition of a practical camera is a pocket camera, a true pocket camera that you can literally stick in your pocket and take anywhere. That means it's a travel camera. My other definition of uh, practical is it has a flip screen so you can see yourself for vlogging and selfies, it has an EVF so you can like take pictures outdoors in bright sunlight. Obviously a mic jack, image stabilization, good eye autofocus where it recognizes your eye. It's, like, it's autofocusing right now. So no matter what I do, it follows me, it knows it's a face and it follows the eye and it sticks on that eye and it stays focused on that. Really important. A manual focus ring. I mean, if you're doing serious photography, you need to have a manual focus ring. Be able to, and you can also use it to change your EV and everything else. Um, super slow motion. This thing can take video up to almost a thousand frames per second. It has a built-in flash. It has a mode dial, so you can switch to all kinds of modes. And it has a really wide zoom range. It goes from 24 to 200. So you can go wide, you can go really far away, which is really important for having a camera that does everything. Because if you're not going to be able to change lenses, that's important too. Now, like I said, I'm shooting with this camera right now. Notice the blurry background. All right, so here's the camera. This is how small it is. It's literally smaller than a deck of cards. Now, you're, I'm also shooting with this camera. Now, how can that be? Well, I have three of them. Here's another one. I have one, two, and three. I use them for B-roll stuff, like I'm using one right now over there for filming me filming this to prove to you that I'm actually on location. Because some people are gonna look at this shot and say, that looks fake, it looks green screen. That's because this has a nice blurry background. This camera can actually do a pretty decent blurry background for a pocket camera with a fixed lens. That's pretty amazing. You can't even get that with the ZV-1, the Canon G7X, I mean, you can't, a little bit, but not as much as this. And I'm gonna show you the comparison in a minute. Even though this zoom lens is f4.5 right now, because it's at 200 millimeter and it's like 12 feet back, that's how I can get this really cool looking blurry background. You can't do that with some of the other ones. Even though those lenses are 1.8, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you the comparison. This camera is the Swiss Army knife of cameras. As you probably guessed by now, it is the Sony RX100. I'm shooting with the Mark 7. This is a Mark VI, this is a Mark IV, the Mark V's over there. I love this camera so much, I keep buying the latest version of it. I just love it, I love it, I love it. It's for traveling, it's the best camera for traveling because you can literally put it in your pocket and take with you wherever you go. It takes really sharp pictures. I do a lot of videos and vlogs with this camera while I'm traveling, I'm on vacation. I do so much stuff with this camera. When I do recipe videos, I do close-up shots of the food with this camera. When we're going out on the town or Kara's walking around the house and she looks really cool, I say, hold it, let me take a picture of you real quick. This is the camera I grab. It's just so practical for so many things, for close-ups, for wide shots, for telephoto shots. It's very dependable for focusing, good color. You can do manual everything, white balance, you know, blah, blah, blah. It has a manual focus ring. It can shoot 4K. Pretty much everything can shoot 4K nowadays. It has the built-in flash for filling in when you're at a restaurant. It has a mic jack for plugging in a really good microphone and a pop-up high-resolution viewfinder for when shooting outdoors in bright sunlight. So let's compare this camera with some of the other ones that are kind of like this. And everybody's talking about the ZV-1. Now that's Again, that's a vlogging camera. It's not an all-purpose picture-taking camera. Look at that nice blurry background. That is really cool. You can't even get this much of a blur with the ZV-1 or other cameras that have the 1.8 lens. This one is a 2.8 to 4.5, and it's still blurrier because of the 200 telephoto on here. So let's, let's switch. Let's check this out. So here's what you get with the ZV-1. It's a zoomed all the way in, which is 70 millimeter, which, I mean, it's still the camera. I can almost touch it. It's that close. It's, it's not even that much of a zoom. In order to get the f1.8 with the ZV-1 and cameras like that, you got to be at the widest setting. So that's what this is right now. The camera is literally like a foot from my face. It's like it's that close. So it's distorting my face. Yeah, I got a little bit more of a blurry background, but it's distorting my face. It's not really that practical. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's just, I don't like my face being distorted with a lens that's just literally like inches from my face. All right, this is the Canon G7X Mark III. Same lens as the ZV-1, 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8. It's on 70 right now, 2.8. This zoom really doesn't go that far, which means the background's not gonna be that out of focus. It's a good camera, but it's just, it's not an RX100. 
If you can't afford an RX100, they're like $1,200, and this might be a good alternative for you. This camera here is only $500, and it's got a really sharp lens. It's a Leica lens. This is a Lumix LX10. It's a Panasonic version of it. It's got the 24 to 72. Instead of 1.8 to 2.8, it's 1.4 to 2.8, and the background is more blurrier than the G7X and the ZV-1. That's because this lens goes down to 1.4, which is really cool, and it's sharp. This is the sharpest of all the compact camera lenses. Even though it's the same range, 24 to 70, it's the sharpest because it's a Leica lens. I love this camera. This is actually one I use quite a bit also. So if you can't afford the RX100, consider the Lumix LX10. It doesn't have a mic jack, but it does have a lot of features that are really cool. It's got a manual focus ring up front, and it has a manual f-stop ring, which is really cool flip up screen. It doesn't have an EVF, but I mean, for 500 bucks, I mean, look how sharp this picture is. And uh, the background's pretty blurry too. So this is a really cool pocket camera to consider if you cannot afford the RX100. If you can't afford a $700 GX7 or a $500 LX10, then this one might be an interesting alternative. This one is only a couple hundred bucks. It's the Canon SX740HS. It has a 40 times zoom. This camera right now, it's actually 30 feet back. It's way, way back. And it has a really cool look when you zoom all the way in to do a shot like this. I love this camera. It's a cool little lightweight camera that weighs almost nothing and it costs almost nothing. Lightweight, it's a pocket camera really long zoom no mic jack or viewfinder or anything like that but I mean you can still get a pretty cool look with a cheap pocket camera I love this camera it's, this is great it's I like all cameras what can I say this is cool and here we are back again with the RX100 Mark 7. That background is noticeably blurrier than on the other cameras because of the 200, even though it's at f4.5, and that's because it's a one inch sensor. Now the downside to that is when you cram a large sensor into a tiny little camera like this and you run video for 10, 15 minutes, it's gonna overheat. It's not a big deal for me because I don't shoot video for more than 10, 15 minutes at a time anyway, but if you do, if you shoot like hours and hours of video, then get a camcorder, like I said in this video, and dedicate to that. But if you just shoot a little bit of video and you travel a lot and you take pictures and you just want a little pocket thing, then this is the camera to get. You know, I do, you know, for serious photo shoots, I do use full frame. If I, if I carry a camera bag, I'll have a micro four thirds or an APS-C camera with some lenses and stuff like that. But if I just want to stick a little thing in my pocket and that's it, and I just want to have something ready to go, this is the camera to use for sure. And uh, no, I'm not giving any of these away just because I'm making a video about it. Everything's just because I make a video about something and give stuff away. No, I'm not giving one of these away. So if that's why you're watching this video, then go watch something else. <sighs> now that those people are gone, yes, I am going to give one away. I'm going to give away my Mark IV to my good, true fans. Uh, email uh, your name, uh, USA mailing address, and a phone number to free stuff at marcuspix.com, and I'll announce the winner in the next video. That is cool. A nice blurry background with a pocket camera. That's what makes the, this camera, in my opinion, one of the best vlogging cameras that gives you everything. So there you have it. This is the camera I use more than anything else. I love it so much. I have three or four of them. It's just so practical. If I just want to stick something in my pocket and literally just pockets don't work. My pants pocket. <laughs> anyway, if I just want to stick something in my pocket and just go without having to worry about anything, this is the camera I grab. Uh, yeah, it's a little more expensive. It's $1,200, but there's a reason this thing is the price that it is because it gives you pretty much everything you would want. Taking pictures and video. The Sony RX100. The latest one is the Mark 7. I'll see you in the next video.